Hi, I'm Rick Dior. And today I have a really interesting snare drum for you all. This is a dial tune snare drum. So it's a relatively new invention, I should say, although it draws upon uh, things that have been done in the past, but not as well. Uh, way back in the day, we had the Leedy knob tune drums, which were tuned uh, with knobs instead of uh, the standard tension rods that we all know of today. Uh, those drums were available for a short time. You could still find them used uh, from time to time. And I have played with some of those over the years. Uh, they're, they're amazing and they sound good. The problem is uh, the device that they used to tune them was uh, pretty, uh, you know, well known for failure. The mechanical device would strip and you couldn't get a lot of tension on the drum, especially with calf heads that were used back in those days. We, we have a lot of drums like this, different companies. Uh, one that's well known is the Welsh Tuning System, WTS. Those are really, really nice drums. I've played some of those. I've even played a whole kit. The problem with that particular drum is uh, they use these almost guitar, you know, kind of bass guitar pegs. And they use a steel cable, which this also uses a cable. And the cable is kind of a pain in the neck because when you go and change the heads, you have to fool with the cable. Also, on that drum, uh, when you tune it, it tunes both heads at the same time, which can be good, but it's not always desirable, especially for me. I tune my snare drums a little differently. Sometimes I'll tune the bottom head a little tighter or looser and the top as well, so they're not always the same pitch. And with the Welsh tuning system, that's sort of a given with that system. So great drums, like I said, uh, but uh, this is a little bit different. So this drum uses two knobs. One is for the upper and one is for the lower. So uh, that's great because you can have full control over both heads. The other thing this drum is great for is head changes. So you can change a head as you'll see soon very, very quickly. Now this particular model is the uh, nickel over brass shell. It's extremely heavy. The only drum I have that's heavier than this is my Clevelander 50-pound uh, bell brass snare drum. This thing's not quite that heavy, but it has some weight to it. I would say it's probably, I haven't weighed it, but I would say it's probably about 30 pounds at least. Now, if you look carefully, I'll show you with this camera, you can see where the cable comes down there. It's quite an ingenious system, and I haven't rewrapped the cable yet. Now, I bought this drum new, and I just received it. I mean, I bought it used, sorry. And I just received it, and it had this tape on here. And probably uh, they were using it in a studio, and they wanted to tune it low and muffle this head. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of that. This is just gaffer's tape, I think. So that's gone. And I wanted to play it for you because I just got the drum. And I had this video set up for an earlier video I was doing. Uh, the cameras were set up, in other words. And so I'm going to investigate this live with you guys and learn all about it. I just know what I've read about these drums. And I've watched a few videos. Uh, they were mostly sales videos. Uh, Obviously, kind of a paid advertising thing. I never, you know, take much stock in those things. But, uh, but you know, the drum's beautiful. I gotta say, it's built like a tank. I watched one video where some guy was throwing it around on the floor and off a roof and you know, stupid stuff like that. But um, I don't plan to throw it off my roof, so it doesn't have much use for me or drop it. But I gotta say, it's a heavy drum, like I said. So you need a heavy stand, and the one that I'm using is this Pearl. Uh, heavy stand here that I really like. It's adjustable. I'll put the model in the description. And uh, these are great stands, so definitely going to need some sort of heavy stand. I also like these claws on the stand. They isolate the drum, so it's kind of floating. All right, now we got to put it back. 
So uh, first impressions, I just literally, I put on the cameras and I just started playing it. I tuned it up a little, but right out of the box. And I put my little muffler on here. Let's take that off. So this is one thing I was worried about, the rims, because it's a different kind of um, rim here, as you see. So you can just take it off, and we'll try that in a minute. But uh, the rim shots are great on this. I'm pleasantly surprised. The cross rim click or cross stick sounds good. The drum is somewhat sensitive, although I haven't really discovered a perfect tuning, and we'll do that today. Uh, it's got a DW throw-off, which is fine. I have several drums uh, that use this throw-off, pork pie and DW that use this. It's a great throw-off. I don't have any issues with it whatsoever. So on Tom, tuned this way, this is kind of a moderate tuning. Uh, we'll play that for you. Feels good, sounds good. I could see using this as a tambour, which is a uh, kind of an orchestra tom-tom, a provincial drum uh, on certain things. And we're going to tune it way down in a minute, and I'll show you what I mean. So uh, the mechanics of this, uh, obviously, uh, is it's a cable drum, and it does come with a spare cable if you snap this one, and an Allen wrench. I have not figured out how to put, put it on, but I'm sure someday I'm going to have to. That's a little bit scary. And what we're going to do today is, uh, this may be a little bit of a long video. I don't know how much I'll keep or cut out. But we want to try some different heads. I, um, I took some of these heads out. I got several heads. On the bottom, there's an ambassador. I want to switch that out for a diplomat, which is what I normally use uh, for my bottom head, my snare head. And on the top, this head's a little worn out. I guess the person I bought it from had used it, but not ever changed his top head because it says dial tune on there. So uh, we're going to change it and put, put a fresh head on there. So let's try tuning this drum a little bit. And first, we're going to tune it all the way down. And I believe this right knob in this orientation with the strainer uh, facing me, this right knob, it's, which is on your left, uh, tunes the top head down. And the left knob tunes the bottom head down. That's pretty low. Let's tune that up just a little. And we'll see how it, we can uh, use it as a low tom. There's a little bit of rattling. I, I know that on the uh, WTS drum that happened as well when it was tuned low because uh, of the cable. So if that's a concern, you might want to watch out for that. I'll tune it up a little higher so you can get rid of that, that rattle. And that could be part of the snare mechanism, although it seems okay. So once you have the dials tuned, all the way down, in other words, uh, as loose as possible, you'll find that head is loose. And then you're going to turn this counterclockwise, this rim like this. And then you're going to lift it off. And we'll just put this down here.
and that is it. <laughs> and then you just lift the head off. So let's take a look inside this thing with this camera. There is hardware obviously on the shell. It's not free floating or anything. Seam is okay. It is a brass shell, nickel plated. And while we have this camera, I'm going to show you a little bit of the shell here. It's very reflective because of the black nickel. And here's the dial. That's the one on the right that does the top head. Okay. So let's uh, try this old Weather King Diplomat fiber skin on here. So what I've researched is that when you put this back on, you have to apply even pressure. It can be a little tricky. So let's do that. And I would hold the drum with my legs like that. There we go. Not too bad, not as easy as they make it look. And if this rim gets bent, you're in trouble. So be careful with that. But that went on and then we tuned it up. And what we're gonna do is just do both heads at the same time. So for this, it's, it's clockwise, both hands. All right, we'll try this. One thing that I noticed right away is when you do rim shots, there's sort of a pitch bend in there because that's obviously because both heads are, are tuned so far apart. Here are dipping, so we'll tighten that up a little on the bottom. Feels great. The drum really feels good. It's kind of a wet, loose feel, and there is always a little bit of snare residue in there. One of the things I'm going to try at a later date is put some orchestra snares on here and take it in uh, and play it with the orchestra. That would be really cool if you could change tuning when you're, you know, playing a concert and you want almost sort of a field drum sound. And then, you know, a second later, you could tune it up and get a, a really high snare sound. So uh, these guys should make an orchestra drum. They probably sell a bunch of them. Let's tune it up even more now. It's, it sounds great, actually, really, really good, especially with the thinner heads. I had a feeling that would be the case on most of my brass drums, uh, my old Ludwigs uh, that are nickel like the Black Beauties or um, the Standard or the Specials. I, I like a thinner head on there, like a Diplomat, and the fiber skin is great for that. So th this is really sounding good. I'm going to crank it up even more now. Hopefully it won't break anything. And not real sensitive and I, I'll have to experiment. We'll put a little muffling on there.
So you could probably just crack the living hell out of this thing. I don't want to break it, but <laughs> I'm just going to try it. Choke it. Wow. <laughs> That's great. Okay, we're getting pretty tight now. put a Kevlar head on here and see what that sounds like. But that is impressive. I love it. To, to get that really tight sound in, you know, 10 seconds, however fast you can tur turn your wrists. And it's very sensitive now. So I think those of you that own these, the thinner heads are the way to go. Right away when I changed that ambassador to this diplomat, uh, made a huge difference. All right, so now we're going to try a calf head. And let me loosen it back up. And this should be interesting to get a calf head on there. Hopefully I won't break it. Okay, so that's that. Once again, that was a Diplomat fiber skin, an old one. Old stock that I had. And I have a Lafema calf head. Here it is. Not one of my best heads, just in case I break it. But it's still, it's still a good calf head. It's got a metal rim. All right. Okay, so I would definitely suggest using a metal rim calfskin head on these, not the wood rims. Those will split. I pretty much guarantee it. But let's see how this works here. And it may not, may not work. Yeah, it's going to be rough getting this on. That is not going to work. So, one thing to know now, you cannot use a calf head like this on this drum because the lip is too low. And again, I don't want to break it. You know, already I've done a little, put a little dent in it. So, I just want you all to know that if you get one of these drums, I'll try an earth tone head. Uh, all of mine are on my drums now. I'll try that at a later date and I'll let you know. But the problem is it's made for standard heads. So that is an issue, and I'm sure these guys maybe didn't think of that when they were doing this system, but some people still use calf heads. I use them all the time, and this will be a problem with them because it doesn't have the, um, the rim is not seated like a normal head. You see the difference there. Okay. So I'm a little disappointed right away with that. But I have plenty of drums with calf heads on there, and we're not going to break this one like that. Let's try this Renaissance Ambassador. This is what I use sometimes on my classical snare. This head seems perfect, so let's see if it's a problem. Okay, I got it on. A little bit tricky, but this head should work. And let's tighten this one up. That is a very low tuning. We'll keep going. That's definitely a different sound, much darker. We'll bring it up even more. And even more.
So, so far I like it. Uh, like I said, the rim could be warped. That's why I'm having such a difficult time sort of wrestling with it. Uh, you should be able to just drop it on there and turn it, but it may be off a little. So I'll have to straighten that out. I'll, I'll put it on a piece of a flat table and, and check it out later. But the drum works as advertised, and now we're going to take it over to the kit and play it there. I'm going to switch this head out to that, um, to actually a power stroke. And I'm going to try one more time to see if I can do this fast. So this is a power stroke three head. It's one I use when I play a lot of rock. So we'll do that. And maybe I wasn't loosening it up, but I think I was. Yeah, it's still a little tricky. All right. It's almost like you have to break the head in to get it to sit right. There we go. Okay. I think I'm getting better at it. <laughs> and we'll tighten it. This is a brand new head, so there's going to be some cracking going on with the glue. Right away, uh, because of the nature of the head, it's going to be a lot drier. So that's, that's what I would consider a low tuning. And let's bring it up a little more. Now this will choke because it's such a thick head. I like that a lot. Uh, that's usually the head I'll use uh, if I don't want to use any muffling. It's kind of like a pinstripe that's coated for, for snare drums. So we'll take this over to the drum set and see what it sounds like. All right, so here we are at the drum set. And uh, one thing I noticed right away is this drum is a little bigger than a normal 14-inch drum. Of course, it's six and a half. That's the only size they make right now. But, uh, but the drum probably is about, I don't know, maybe an inch out. It reminds me a little of the PV drums that I have where the snare is a little bigger. So if, it's almost like a 15-inch drum. If you play with one of those, that's what it's going to feel like. So if you have uh, you know, small legs, you're going to have to open them up a little more. Uh, but that's okay. It works, and it's pretty, it's pretty large. So let's see what it sounds like. I noticed right away with the drum this tight it's not a very loud drum so if you're looking for a really loud drum this is not 
a crazy loud drum like a bell brass drum. Now they do make a bell brass version of this. It's very, very expensive. So that might be quite a bit louder. But uh, if it's tuned low, it would be louder. But with this power stroke head on there, which is pretty thick, and we'll change that out in a minute, and hitting pretty hard, it's, it's probably about the volume of maybe uh, Acrylite uh, or uh, maybe a Superphonic uh, Ludwig, but not quite as loud as a Slingerland Sound King, a six and a half, which is a loud drum, being brass, that is, thin brass. Now let's try it with a low tuning. So I'm going to take both of these down and then we'll try it with a really high tuning. feels pretty good and it is a bit louder that low. Now let's take it real high. I gotta say this is really convenient being able to do both heads.
so really versatile. There it feels like one of my pearl free, free floaters, like um, a four inch. I think it's a three and a half that I have. That's um, really, really tight and dry. I'll have to get used to the rim shots. They do feel a little different because the rim sits so low. So that's something to check out. All right, let's change heads to more of a jazz head, which is this fiber skin diplomat. I probably don't need to loosen both of these, but I'm doing it. <laughs> I probably just need to do the top. Well, I think I've learned my lesson because that's what I was doing before. I wasn't loosening it enough. So you got to get the head really, really wrinkled here and then stabilize it. It's still tough though to turn. There we go. So don't be afraid to loosen it too much. The, uh, the cable will not fall off. So now I'm going to try to get what I consider a balance between the top and the bottom. Remember the top is on my left, your right. Here's where uh, this tuning really comes in handy because you can get kind of an older jazz Gretsch sound with the really loose uh, snares by loosening this bottom head. So this is normally how I'll tune my snares when I play jazz when I'm playing an older style. Just below tone there, where you lose your tone, and then up a little. And let's bring this up now. So now I have a drastic difference between the top and the bottom. So that's really, really nice. It sounds to me like one of my old Gretsch chrome over brass drums, 4160. All right, let's, what we'll do now is we will actually do a low tuning with this.
definitely see lots of uses for this playing a jazz gig. Different kinds of tunes, changing the tuning. You can even change it while you're playing. But between tunes, I would definitely do that. It's great. So cool. And let's bring it up now to a really high kind of Roy Haynes tuning. Remember, this is a 6.5 by 14. So we're going to try to get it to sound like a, a 4-inch drum. <laughs> Orange depth. Great. Yeah, it's fun. So I'm going to investigate this thing more, try some different heads. I'm a little disappointed about the calf head thing. What I think I'm going to do is maybe tuck a head a little differently on a metal rim, if I can, and see if I can get it on here, because that was, you know, one of the things I wanted to try to be able to do. But the way it's set up, it's set up for more standard heads, obviously. I'll, I'll go through, I have like so many calf heads. I'll go through one and see if I can get it to uh, fit on here. And when I do, I'll make a short little video. But my verdict is very positive. I have to get used to the drum, obviously. Just got it. And the head changes are more difficult than I thought. And that could be because they bent rim or some other factor. Could be I wasn't loosening it enough. So I will get back to you with my second impression video. But like most things I do, I always like to do a first impression video because, you know, that's before I know much about everything. And and, you know, we can all learn together about it. So uh, we'll play a little, and I'll lower this. And once again, this is a pretty nice drum, I think. And I'd like to hear the wood ones, especially. <laughs> 